Hello, in this video we are going to talk about implicit differentiation. This is a different approach uh, to differentiation than what you've used so far. Uh, this approach is specifically useful if we're working with models that are not functions. Let's jump into an example. Here we want to find the slope of the tangent line to the curve 2x squared minus 4xy plus 3y squared equals 1 at the point negative 1, negative 1 third. So I've graphed this curve, and as you can see, this is not a function. Okay, it does not pass the vertical line test. This looks like maybe like a, some type of orbit, like a, a satellite maybe orbiting the Earth or, or something like this. And we have the point negative 1, negative 1 third I've highlighted here. Our goal here is to find the slope at this point okay but it's not a function so we have to approach this a little bit differently okay remember for a slope uh, the slope is dy over dx or y prime we use the derivative uh, to find the slope rise over run change in y over change in x so our goal here is to find the derivative of y with respect to x now, because this isn't a function, we can't like solve this equation for y. You could try if you wanted to. That's actually not possible here to solve this for y in any uh, nice algebraic way because it's, it, y is not a function of x here. But what we can do is we can do the derivative implicitly. What that means is I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x of each term on both sides of the equation. So I'm going to take the derivative of 2x squared minus the derivative of 4xy plus the derivative of 3y squared equals the derivative of 1. This is what it means to differentiate implicitly. Okay. Now some of these, so we've got four derivatives to find essentially, and some of them are easy and some of them are a little bit trickier. The easiest one is probably the one on the right hand side. The derivative of any constant is zero. So no, no problem there. Uh, this first term is also fairly easy. The derivative with respect to x of 2x squared, that would just be 4x. Okay. Now the other two terms are a little bit trickier. Um, let's start with the third term here. This one doesn't necessarily look any different from, you know, the derivative of 2x squared, but this is not 3x squared. This is 3y squared. The derivative of 3x squared would be 6x. Okay, but this is the derivative of 3y squared. Now, how is that different? Well, you know, if you, if you recall using uh, substitution, we know that the derivative of 3u squared, let's say we substituted uh, something complicated here and we just called this 3u squared. Well, the derivative of 3u squared, as you recall, was 6u times u prime. We have to use chain rule if we've changed the variable. Okay, if you haven't changed the variable, we just take the derivative in the normal way. So the derivative of 3x squared is 6x. If it's a different variable, then we still do the derivative the same way, but we have to apply chain rule. Okay, so what about the derivative of 3y squared? Well, that's going to be 6y times y prime. Okay, we have to use chain rule in this term because it's a different variable. Okay, now this second term, let me go back to the second term. This term has both x and y. We have to treat this as a product and use product rule. Okay, so we're going to use product rule for this term. So I'm going to keep this uh, minus here, and we're going to apply... Uh, product rule. So I'm going to take 4x times the derivative of y plus y times the derivative of 4x. Product rule. Okay. So let's go ahead and simplify that. 4x times the derivative of y. Well, the derivative of y is what we call y prime. So that would be 4x times y prime. 
and then the derivative of 4x is just 4. So I would have y times 4, which is 4y. Here, this is a function of x, so I don't need chain rule here. I just take the derivative the normal way. The derivative of 4x would be 4 uh, times the y would give me 4y. Okay, and then if I go ahead and get rid of the parentheses here, I'm going to have 4x minus 4x times y prime minus 4y plus 6y times y prime equals 0. Okay, so what I've done so far is I differentiated all four terms in this equation with respect to x using chain rule whenever appropriate. We have to use chain rule anytime it's not variable x. Now, remember our goal was to find the derivative. Well, I see the derivative here and I see the derivative here. So I'm going to leave these two terms here and I'm going to move the other terms to the other side of the equation. So these two terms have my derivative. I'm going to move the 4x and the negative 4y to the other side. So that's going to give me a negative 4x plus 4y. Okay, we're solving for the derivative. So the next step, I would factor out the derivative. So I have negative 4x plus 6y times my derivative equals negative 4x plus 4y. And then I can divide. So my derivative is negative 4x plus 4y divided by negative 4x plus 6y. Okay, or I can write dy over dx is negative 4x plus 4y over negative 4x plus 6y. It, it's kind of important at this point, we want to be a little bit more specific about what derivative we're working with, and that'll become uh, a little more clear uh, in the next example I'm going to show you. But instead of calling all the derivatives y prime, uh, we want to get in the habit of, of being a little bit more specific here. Okay, Instead of y prime, it's the derivative of y with respect to x. Now, this is kind of a strange derivative because the derivatives you found so far have been the derivative of a function, and your derivative is another function of x. Now here, notice we have x's and y's, but that's okay because our goal here was to find the slope at the point negative one, negative one third. Okay, so the slope at negative one, negative one third, all I have to do is plug in the x and y coordinates. So I plug in negative one for x, and I plug in negative one third for y. That's gonna give me four minus four thirds over four minus two, which is eight thirds divided by two, which is the same as eight thirds times a half, which is four thirds. So the slope, at the point negative one, negative one third is positive four thirds. Okay, and if you look at the graph again, that makes sense. We can tell that the slope is positive here. It looks like it might be pretty close to positive one. Okay, but it's not exactly, that's why we do the math. It's not exactly one, but it's somewhat close. It's one and a third. Okay, so that answer makes a lot of sense. Okay, so that's implicit differentiation. If you don't have a function, that's okay. You just have to use this different approach. And the cool thing is you end up with this formula. This is basically a formula for computing the slope at any point. So whatever point on the curve you want to compute the slope at, you just plug in the x and y coordinates of the point, and uh, this formula will give you the slope. So it's, it's a pretty nice thing. Okay, now let's look at an application. All right, so this says the height of a cylinder is increasing at 7 centimeters per second, and the radius is decreasing at 6 centimeters per second. How fast is the volume changing when the cylinder is 5 centimeters high with a radius of 4 centimeters? Is the volume increasing or decreasing? This is what we would call a related rates problem. 
related rates. Because if you read the problem carefully, it, it gives you a couple of rates of things that are changing, and it asks you for another rate. Okay? So the height is changing. The height is getting bigger. The radius is getting smaller. So you have to imagine this cylinder that's getting taller and thinner. Okay, so I'm imagining like if you have some Play-Doh or some clay on a table and you roll it back and forth under your hand, you know, what's going to happen? It's going to kind of get longer and thinner as you continue to do that. So that's kind of the scenario here, only it's kind of up on its side. We've got this cylinder. It's got a height and it's got a radius. The radius would be, you know, this distance here. Okay, and you know what exactly is it telling us here? It says the height of a cylinder is increasing at seven centimeters per second. We want to recognize that that's a derivative. Okay, here's a hint: anytime the u the units are something per something centimeters per second, that is a rate of change. That is a derivative. Now we have to be specific about what derivative this is. Okay, we're talking about the rate at which the height is changing with respect to time. I say with respect to time because it says per second here. So I'm going to call this derivative dh over dt, the change in height over the change in time. We want to be very specific about what derivative this is. Okay, and since it says the height is increasing at a rate of 7 centimeters per second, I'm going to say that dh dt is 7 centimeters per second. Okay, the next thing we're given is that the radius is decreasing at 6 centimeters per second. That's another derivative. What derivative is that? That's the derivative of the radius with respect to time. So I'm going to say dr dt equals negative six centimeters per second. Why did I call it negative six? Because the radius is decreasing. So the first sentence in this problem is giving you two derivatives. It gives you the derivative of the height of the cylinder and it gives you the derivative of the radius of the cylinder. Okay, now what's the question? What are we supposed to find in this problem? Our goal here is to find how fast the volume is changing. How fast is the volume changing? So it's not asking us to find a volume. It's asking us for the derivative of the volume. Okay, we're supposed to find the derivative of the volume given the derivative of the height and the derivative of the radius. So there are three rates here. And, you know, the goal of this problem is to figure out how they're related. Okay, so we're supposed to find the derivative of the volume when the height of the cylinder is 5 centimeters and the radius is 4. Now again, remember, the height and the radius of this cylinder are changing. So this is just like one snapshot of this, uh, you know, morphing cylinder. Now, before we can determine how these three derivatives are related, we first need to answer the question, how are uh, the variables related? How are h, r, and v related? Okay, we cannot determine how these derivatives are related unless we know how the three variables are related. And uh, the relationship in this case is just the formula for the volume of a cylinder. So the answer to my question is volume equals pi r squared h. Okay, the volume of a cylinder is the area of the base, which is pi r squared times the height. So this is the relationship between vr and h. And from this relationship, we should be able to get the relationship between the three derivatives. Now, what derivative do I want? Notice all of these are derivatives with respect to time. So I'm going to use implicit differentiation here. And I'm going to take the derivative with respect to time on both sides of this equation. So this is a nice application of implicit differentiation. Okay. Now notice none of these variables are t. So we're going to have to use chain rule for all of this. But let's start with the first side. What is the derivative of volume with respect to time? Well, we don't really need to overthink that. The derivative with respect to time of volume is just what we would call 
dv dt. Okay, the derivative with respect to time of volume is called dv dt. And then here, since I have two variables, I'm going to use product rule. Okay, so here I'm going to use product rule. So what it's going to look like is pi r squared times the derivative of h plus h times the derivative of pi r squared. So dv dt is going to be pi r squared times the derivative of h, which would be dh dt, plus h times the derivative of pi r squared. The derivative of pi r squared would be 2 pi r times the derivative of r with respect to t. We have to apply chain rule. This is not pi t squared. The derivative of pi t squared would be 2 pi t. This is a different variable, so we have to apply chain rule and multiply by r prime at the end. But again, I want to be more specific than just calling it r prime. I'm going to call it dr dt because I'm differentiating with respect to time here. Okay. Now the cool thing is we have this kind of complicated expression, but we have values for all of these numbers. We were given a value for the radius, we were given dh dt, and we were given a value for height and dr dt. Now it is appropriate for me to plug all of those values in. So let me just remind you, dh dt was positive 7, dr dt was negative 6, and we want a height, we want the height to be 5 and the radius to be 4. So I'm going to plug all of these in. So pi times 4 squared times dh dt, which was 7, plus the height, which is 5, times 2 pi r, which was 4, times dr dt, which is negative 6. So what I end up with here is dv dt equals 112 pi minus 240 pi, which is negative 128 pi, which is approximately negative 402, approximately. And this is the rate of change of volume with respect to time. So the units here would be whatever your units for volume would be, which in this case would be centimeters cubed. And then time we're measuring in seconds. So this would be negative 402 centimeters cubed per second. Okay, so just to recap here, when the height is growing at seven centimeters per second and the radius is shrinking at negative six centimeters per second, the question was, what is happening to the volume? Well, at this point in time, when the height is five and the radius is four, the volume is shrinking. The volume is decreasing at 402 cubic centimeters per second. Okay, the volume is decreasing at 402 centimeters per second. Okay, so that's an example of related rates. I hope you found this helpful.